I have two brief questions I'd like to ask, if I may. Foot Media, my name is Brendan Malone and you're watching The Daily Question. Today's question of the day, should we stop using the term social justice? Now the reason I'm asking that question is because I've gone to the viewer mailbag and Michael Davis has sent me the following question. Hi Brendan, I believe justice is blind and when you put a qualifier in front of it, then you become an activist for that qualifier, e.g. social justice warriors are less interested in real justice and mostly just seek results that advance their agenda and not real justice. What are your thoughts? Well, Michael, that's an interesting question. It's also a question that I've been pondering myself for a while now. Uh, one thing is for certain, the term social justice is now well and truly shot. The reputation of that term is just so badly sullied, I'm not sure it ever can be recovered. And it's really because of the more uh, dogmatic, uh, the more extreme uh, uh, ideologues who are committed to this cause, what we might call the social justice warriors, who have done a couple of things. Number one is they have married up Marxist or uh, ideologies or, or even communism into the mix uh, when they talk about these issues and everything is sort of viewed through that lens of, of oppressor class and oppressed class and the whole lens of revolution and related to that lens of revolution is, is the way in which they go about conducting themselves and how they've become so much more irrational and childish and even I would say very dangerous because there's a fertile breeding ground now for political violence and the way that they are choosing to try and take their message to the public. And basically for a lot of people, they look at that and they go, oh, I don't want any part of that. That looks really, really bad. Now the problem of course is they have taken genuine issues of justice and these big important questions about the way in which people should or shouldn't be treated by our society and the way in which people can very easily become victims to all sorts of things and structures that are in place in our society and they have, they've just hijacked them and they've hijacked them in a way that is not good and so the, 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 the sort of the serious issues really are minimalized and people have now become so obsessed and frightened of the way in which the social justice warriors have tended to conduct themselves and I think getting back to good old fashioned vanilla justice like you suggest I think is a really good idea. The whole idea of justice it, it, we're talking here about virtue and virtue is objective. You can tell when someone is being treated justly and when they are being treated unjustly. Now one of the problems with the social warriors is that what they've tended to do is they have taken any form of discrimination, you know, any point of difference where people are treated differently in different situations or, or in a particular situation. And, and what they've done is they've said that's unjust. But, you know, discrimination isn't automatically unjust at all. So, for example, we discriminate against people who are not old enough to get a driver's license. So young children are not allowed to go and apply for and get a driver's license and drive vehicles. That is a form of discrimination. We positively discriminate against one group and we don't apply that to another group. But that's not unjust. And there's lots of instances in that, of that in society. And so social justice warriors often focus in on these moments where there is difference and they try and turn them into oppression or injustice when they're not. Whereas with the word justice, and because you're talking about virtue, it's very objective and you can actually clearly apply it and you can say, well, even if there is a, a, a discrimination of sorts happening here, is this discrimination unjust? Because it would be wrong if it's unjust. At other times, like I said with the driver's license example, it's perfectly fine to discriminate, okay? And so this is where I think that this idea of just going back to good old fashioned vanilla, vanilla justice really could be quite a good and important thing for our society to do. I also wonder whether or not we've sort of lost sight of the fact that justice, it can only really apply in a context that's social anyway. It, I mean, the justice is something that is particular to, to, to human beings because human beings have a moral life. Uh, you know, we're personal moral subjects. We're not animals. We're not plants. We're not just random machines. And so human beings are the only ones who actually build, uh, you know, complex societies and have a, a society that is that's built around uh, the moral life as well. And so the term social justice is kind of a little bit redundant anyway, because it really only applies to us as human beings. We're the only ones who are social in that way where justice would, you know, would be a factor here. So why not just talk about justice full stop? But once you add social 
to the mix and you talk about social justice, now you can start slipping in all sorts of other factors under the radar that aren't really about justice so much as they are about other ideologies and about how you view, for example, uh, masculinity and femininity and, and biological sex. Uh, that is a very common example, and it's sort of very much governed by ideology, and you can start slipping those in under the radar, and so you can then say, oh, this is an injustice, and, and, and we start to lose sight of the fact of whether or not it really is an injustice, because you've slipped all these other things in through the back door, uh, and, and sort of confused and muddied the waters a little bit. I guess the one point where I would disagree with you, Michael, is that, yes, while uh, social justice warriors are fighting to advance their agenda, I don't think they see their agenda as being something separate from justice. I think they genuinely believe that they are fighting for justice. I think they genuinely believe they're fighting for a better world. I think they genuinely believe that their agenda, it's not just a power trip that they're on. I think they are mistaken in this belief, but I think they genuinely believe that they are fighting to make the world a better place. Now, what this shows to us is that there's a very real danger if you have a sense of justice and a very emotively driven focus on something that is uncoupled from the question of what is true. And so you don't have truth factoring in here at all. So, so you don't have a good uh, and authentic moral philosophy that's guiding your actions. You're just driven by a sort of a, a pure passion or a pure emotion. We've got to fix this injustice. I mean, this is exactly how you end up with things like communism. Yeah, we're going to fix uh, uh, inequality in society. We're going to fix the, the, the financial disparities in our society by imposing a, a dictatorship on people, by imposing something unjust on them. And hey, look, we've made the world more just. Well, the problem is that if, if you actually thought critically and evaluated the ideology properly, uh, uh, you know, by good standards of let's measure it with truth, then you wouldn't buy into a lot of this stuff. And I think that's where the real danger lies. I think these people are sincere, but the moral of the story here is don't just be driven by emotion. Uh, don't just be driven by your passions. Make sure that those passions are actually put at the service of truth. Make sure that those emotions are put at the service of truth and that they are driving you deeper, not just into the truth, but into any activism you do is actually guided by that as well. And you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater and you don't get into a situation where the end justifies the means and you start doing immoral things and claiming that you are doing a very moral and good thing, that you start doing unjust things and saying, hey, we're bringing about justice. We fixed that problem, didn't we? Yeah, sure you did, but the way you did it was very unjust and you've, you've caused a whole lot of other injustice in the process. So yeah, while the, you know while they may be very much advanced in their agenda, I think they probably are genuine in that. And that in some ways, that's even more frightening because when you are so genuinely committed to an agenda like that, to an ideology, uh, what you've got is a situation where you've got a group of people who are trying to take an idea and they're trying to impose it upon reality. And when they fight with a certain blind zeal for that, we all know throughout human history how those kind of things work out. So we need to really, really guard against uh, separating truth from action, particularly when you're concerned with activism in the area of justice and how society should be structured. As per usual, I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know what you think in the comments section below. And if you like the content I'm creating and you'd like to see more of it, then please support me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. There's a link in the description below and a link on screen at the end of this video. That's right, I can hear my theme music too. I'll see you next week on The Daily Question.